further, even farther. And I do this to this day. You know, there's there's still um, there's many artists today that inspire me. But the difference is today, I'm not. I'm no longer inspired by caricature artists. Um, you know, there's a lot of caricature artists out there that I think are really good. Um, there's different artists that I see on Facebook or just different, you know, publications I see, and I'm like, oh, that's really, it's really good. And I and I and I think, you know, it's a great drawing, good likeness. But it's not the kind of art that inspires or excites me. Um, I love creating it myself, um, but you know, I don't, I don't collect caricature art. I don't look through character art. Um, sorry, I happen to live right next to a fire station, so if you hear uh, fire engines and so on, that's just the norm here. So um, anyway, uh, so I, I I get in you know inspired by other artists than caricature artists you know of course I respect artists like Sebastian Kruger he's he's an amazing artist but more than his caricature I I'm inspired and think that his you know his painting is what blows me away um, his ability to to draw and paint and his his knowledge of different techniques and mediums it's just unreal his caricatures are great his portraits are great but it's not it's not a uh, it's not a trick. It's not magic. It's 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 not a uh, something that I don't understand. I I get it. I know what he's doing, how he's doing it. His painting is just unreal. Um, but the most you know most of the artists that inspire me today are just really good painters. Um, and I love you know real loose, real expressive type painting. Uh, uh, I've mentioned before artists like Jenny Seville. Uh, I just love, uh, you know, how huge she paints, the just giant brush strokes, it's very juicy, uh, exciting paintings, um, you know, Lucian Freud, uh, I love, uh, I love the work of James Jean, you know, uh, I, I think that Sam Weber is a, is a extremely talented artist, he's, he's got an amazing style and I love his work, um, I love Richard Schmid and uh, Jeremy Geds. You know, the, the list goes on and on. There's there's so many different artists I just think just amazing. Um, but most of the artists that inspire me are not caricature artists. Um, you know, I, I really get inspired too by, I mentioned Nico, uh, who designed Kung Fu Panda, the characters for Kung Fu Panda, and How to Train a Dragon. I love his style of drawing. Um, there's artists like Steven Silver. Uh, there's so many different artists who just have just so much to offer. But what you what you want to do is you, you don't want to get caught up in ripping off an artist, um, and you know, in deciding that I you know you like this person's style, so you want to try to to do the exact same style. And this guy's got a great career, so I'm going to try to do my work so it looks exactly like his. Um, first of all, this artist that you're copying is most likely going to continue to develop and grow and continue to become better. Um, and you're going to always be one step behind or many steps behind. So I think what you should what you need to do is just be inspired and soak in the inspiration and you know you, you just need to continue drawing, continue painting and eventually yeah, you will have your own uh look and style. Um so so anyway, hopefully this has been helpful. That's the last of my uh questions. Um and so there's a little bit left of this painting. So I guess what I'm going to do towards the end here is I'm just going to talk about uh, you know what's happening in the painting, and you know maybe cover a couple things that I've done here, and then um, you know take it from there. So hopefully you've enjoyed watching this. And uh, to tell you the truth, I uh, I have no problem painting and drawing. Uh, <laughs> it's what I do. It's what I love to do. But talking and and uh, answering questions and stuff uh, I it's not my favorite thing to do but I, I thought that it would be an exciting thing or a cool thing for people I get a lot of questions and a lot of emails on a regular basis and it's hard for me to like to email and answer every single person so I figured you know this way people can watch you know watch me paint and and get some of their answers or there's some of their questions answered uh, but personally you know it's like standing in front of a crowd. It makes me a little bit nervous. Uh, so hopefully um, that hasn't shown too much in my voice, and you're able to understand what I'm saying and 
I don't sound like a complete psycho. So, um, anyway, uh, um, let me just try to catch up here on the painting, and hopefully, um, my voice is timed right with uh, the recording. As I've mentioned before, that I am uh, new to this recording thing. So, um, anyway, um, uh, right now when I'm looking at the white painting, I'm working on the eyes. So hopefully, it's it's catching up to that. But actually, it's moving all over the place. Um, which brings me back to early on in uh, the earlier stages of the video where I, I say how I move around quite a bit um, and I never never stay in one area um, and I think that's really an important thing to to understand you know I mean those of you who who paint and who paint all the time already know this and understand this um, but for those of you who are learning how to paint or have been painting for a while but um, maybe have been struggling. I think it's a really important thing, and a really you know, uh, it's a key thing to to becoming a better painter is to be able to move around a lot, to not focus in one area, um, because as I've mentioned before, you, 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 the painting starts to develop as a whole. Um, you know, there's not just one area that looks finished. Um, it's the whole thing is sort of coming together at once, and obviously you can't work on every single area at once. But if you move around, you know, work on an eye here, work on part of the nose, work on the chin, the cheek. Um, and and I think the reason that I do this is I start to, uh, as I'm painting, I start to, um, I start to notice, you know, certain areas that are looking like they need more attention. And I and I'll go to that area and I'll kind of work on the area a little bit. And as I zoom back and look I, I notice another area that needs a little bit more work and so it's a constant back and forth um, but the main thing especially in this painting because it is a black and white um, as I am focusing you know just on getting these values to look right um, you know I, I zoom back and I can tell okay I, I can get a little bit darker in this area um, the one thing I do want to mention though is I'm not necessarily copying this photograph um, obviously I'm using it as my main inspiration and my main reference, um, but I'm not I'm not trying to get every single little thing about you know every little um, uh, crease in his mouth exactly right or every little hair you know every hair is not placed in the exact same place um, you know it's it's uh, one of those things where I'm painting uh, by feeling you know I'm I'm trying to to get the impression. Of, of this character down and so I, I will you know add in my own things here and there and just I want to make it a cool piece of art um, just like the background um, I am adding some speckling in there with a, a speckle brush uh, and just different textures and, and brush strokes back there I'm trying to make it a beautiful painting I'm not just trying to get a good likeness of Dwight I'm trying to make it a cool piece of art um, something that excites me, something that I would like to see and look at. I don't want it to be bland and boring. I want it to be exciting. And as I mentioned before, I want it to feel like a painting. I don't want it to feel like a uh, a digital morphed photograph. Um, and so, what's one thing too? I'm excited that I was able to record this whole process to show everybody, you know, from beginning to end, what it looks like uh, for me to do a painting like this. Um, so I had a lot of fun doing this, and I hope. Um, Everyone really enjoyed watching it. Um, I do want to let you guys know before this ends that I do teach a course at schoolism.com, and um, my next course starts in May. Um, it's a fun course, and we cover a lot, um, a lot of drawing and painting techniques, um, a lot about the anatomy and exaggeration and likeness, and and towards the end, um, the last three assignments are about illustration and how to to put a person. Um, in any position you want, how to light them, how to um, basically draw a person doing whatever it is you want and make it work, make it look real. So um, anyway, I hope, hope you've enjoyed this and uh, there'll be more videos to come soon. So thank you so much for watching.